I have a whole lot of kumara, or sweet potato, and six liters of agave syrup. The plan is to make a tequila-inspired craft spirit. How's it going, Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and ever since my brother-in-law introduced me to proper good tequila, I've been kind of obsessed with it, but we don't get a lot of it here in New Zealand, and we certainly don't get the fresh ingredient. I can't get my hands on blue agave, that's for certain. However, quite some time ago, Bearded and Board mentioned that apparently when they're roasting the agave, it kind of smells like roasting kumara or roasting sweet potato. So here we are. And the first step is to roast the kumara, to cook it, to gelatinize the starch in it. And if I was making tequila, I would use a big like roasting pit. I don't have a roasting pit. What I do have is a pizza oven that's been getting really wet all winter and needs a long, slow fire to dry it out. So I may as well roast the kumara in this, maybe get a little bit of smoky action on it. Uh, it's also a perfect excuse to use my faints to uh, start the fire. has been burning for around about an hour now. Temperature's starting to come up. I'm gonna keep the fire stoked, but on the low side for two reasons. One is that I'd like to push a little bit of smoke onto the kumara, the sweet potato. Uh, two is that it's a really bad idea to heat a wet pizza oven up quickly. <laughs> Not a good idea. Uh, so I have roughly eight kilos of kumara, sweet potato, uh, and it's a mix between the golden and the purple. Plan is, I'm not even, honestly, I'm not even gonna wash these. I'd kind of planned on it, but they're pretty clean. A little bit of dirt's not gonna hurt anyone in a fermentation that we're gonna dis to distill. Uh, but I do wanna cut these up just to, you know, process them down a little bit so they cook a little bit more evenly and a little bit quicker, because I think, like I said, temperature's gonna be low on this for a while. So uh, let me get these cut up onto trays and into the oven. All the kumara is in the oven. I'm gonna keep the fire stoked low, let it die down every now and again to give off a bunch of smoke. It's gonna be a long, I'm guessing, probably two hours of slow roasting this. You can see, just up here over my shoulder though, uh, a little vent. Uh, that is the steam vent, so it lets the moisture that's building up uh, into steam inside the walls of the oven and the floor of the oven uh, slowly off gas so we don't you know, actually crack the oven. The reason I mention it is because when I built the oven, I used uh, tri-clamps to put that in the wall. <laughs> All right, team, the sweet potato slash kumara is all roasted up. Uh, we have a very faint, delicate smoke presence, which is nice. It's kind of more on the savory, bacony side, not big and punchy, kind of what we were hoping for. Uh, and we have a decent amount of color showing up uh, in probably at least, I would say, 40% of the uh, individual pieces, which is perfect. I have some water boiling here. Uh, the plan is to just give these a bit of a smashing, which might be easier said than done, actually. <laughs> Since I've been doing this as a full-time job and getting into craft spirits, I find myself drinking a whole lot less, but I taste a lot of alcohol, and I have days like this where I've got to taste three different things for three different videos, and it's my birthday. I'm gonna have a few drinks tonight. But I've got kids. I've still got to have my A game tomorrow. Enter the sponsor of today's show, Z Biotics. This is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic invented by a PhD scientist to help make the morning after a little bit more bearable. 
When you drink alcohol, it gets converted into a pretty toxic byproduct uh, that is responsible for making you feel really rough the next day. <laughs> Zbiotics Probiotic creates an enzyme that helps break that down, but in your gut, instead of in your liver, where, you know, it's gonna be a whole lot more helpful for you. So drink one of these before you start drinking. Try to drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to help your next day be a whole lot more productive. I first discovered Zbiotics on my last big trip to Texas. It was a work trip, involved a whole lot of tasting and a whole lot of work. Uh, and I really think this stuff helped me stay a little bit more productive than I would have been. With Thanksgiving and the holiday season just around the corner, it's a great time to pick these up. You'll be very glad you did the day after you feast. So you can go to zbiotics.com slash stillit to get 15% off at checkout when you use the code stillit. Zbiotics back their product enough to give you 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they will refund you. That is zbiotics.com slash stillit. Use the code stillit for 15% off. Back with a knife. Uh, I'm just gonna kinda give these a rough dice chop. Uh, we're going to use some um, high temperature alpha amylase in the water. There's not a whole lot of starch in these, honestly. This is mostly for flavor in this recipe. Uh, but we may as well uh, at least attempt to convert some of it, right? So we'll get this broken down a little bit uh, to allow the water to dissolve the gelatinized starch and uh, let the enzymes do their thing. So all the kumara slash sweet potatoes been uh, <laughs> mostly chopped up and popped in here. It's up to a boil. Uh, it has been boiling for about 10 minutes just to let it do its thing, get all kind of incorporated a little bit more, make up for my crappy cutting. <laughs> uh, so what I'm gonna do is sprinkle in a small amount of, a very tiny amount, probably like a quarter of a teaspoon of the high temp alpha amylase. Uh, and I'm gonna give this a stir. Let it boil for another two or three minutes. Then I'm gonna turn the heat off uh, and add in a little bit more. This stuff denatures at about 95 degrees Celsius, uh, which for those of you in, uh, in the US or on Fahrenheit is a, a little bit under boiling. Uh, because this is boiling and because there's sugar in it, it'll be at a slightly higher temperature. It will denature the enzymes, uh, but they do work a whole lot faster as they're denaturing. And then I'll kill the element, let it come down in temperature for a couple of minutes, put some more enzymes in, uh, and let it sit for probably about 45 minutes. All right, that's cooled down a little bit. Oh, that's way too much. It's not gonna hurt anything, but uh, it's just a waste. <laughs> Give it a mix. I'll cover it up to keep the temperature up, uh, you know, not drop too quickly. And we'll let it sit for 45 minutes. When we come back, it's time to get this into a fermenter and get uh, the agave syrup in as well. This has been sitting for an hour now, more than enough time. It's still up at about uh, 85 degrees, so, you know, I'm happy with that. And it is at 10, 20, eight. I'm guessing about, about 10 liters of water, eight kilos of kumara in here. That's actually better than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, but I hope this gives some indication of how tricky it would be to make a straight sweet potato or kumara mash and get a decent yield off it. Uh, you would need, it, it'd need to be very, very thick. The kumara mash is in the fermenter now. Time to get the agave syrup in. I have six of these, uh, which is a little over six kilograms. I'm guessing uh, once I add all this in, what was it 1028, but there's only about, hmm, I'm guessing we can probably get this to about 45 liters uh, and about 1065. That is uh, the plan. Rinse the bottles out with hot water to get all the goodness into your fermenter and top the whole thing up to roughly 45 liters. We're up to roughly 45 liters here and uh, shooting from the hip, I have forgotten or haven't calculated in the fact that this was syrup. So a lot of the weight of the syrup is liquid, not just straight sugar. Uh, I've only got up to 1045 in here. We could ferment it as is, uh, but because I'm just kind of shooting from the hip and experimenting on this one, I think, I think we're gonna throw a little bit of sugar in there and uh, 
get this up to a more economical gravity, I guess we would call it. So let me dump this in, uh, three kilos of sugar, that's that, uh, and 45 liters-ish. This should bring it up to 1065, 1070. That's what I'm hoping for. With the sugar fully dissolved, we're hitting 1067 as a gravity and roughly 45 liters. The big question now is what yeast am I going to use? I don't have any quote unquote tequila yeast. I'd like to push it that way if I can. I could use just a baker's yeast, I guess. I could go wild ferment. Uh, I could use a whiskey yeast, a, a beer yeast. I don't know, there's a lot of different options. In the end, I've decided to go with a rum yeast. I think maybe a few little fruity esters being pushed in could be kind of interesting. So I'm gonna go with the uh, Pinnacle rum yeast. We're gonna ferment it at 28 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll let it ferment until it's dry. The wash is fermented out dry and I've got a little sample here. I gotta say, it's smelling absolutely amazing. I am getting aspects of the Kumita, of the agave syrup, of some of the esters that I was expecting from the yeast, but the big thing, the big standout is peaches and apricots. Like fresh, delicious peaches and apricots. And I have no idea where that's coming from. Maybe it's kind of an amalgamation of all of those flavors put together. It's bizarre. I wanna keep that flavor, uh, so I'm gonna double distill this. Most of the wash, more on that in a second, goes into the Dr. Gratis pot using the false bottom. So I can kind of throw caution to the wind here a little bit, put all the chunky stuff in, hope to get a little bit more flavor out of distillation and hopefully uh, not scorch anything. This is our stripping run, I'm not making any cuts, I'm just cutting down volume and I'm gonna run until the drips coming off the end of the still hit about 8% ABV. All of those low wines I've collected go into another still because I'm gonna step down in size a little bit here. I'm gonna use the T500 with the Alembic Dome. All of the low wines go in and I uh, had about probably three liters of wash that I was a bit scared of putting into the stripping run uh, because of boil over potential. So that can go in now as well. We'll fire the still up at 100%, get it up to temperature, drop the percentage of power going into the pot down to about 60% and start collecting four shots. Uh, this time around I collected roughly 100 mils. I'm not really worried about the uh, specific amount. Then I collected probably roughly 600 mils of heads before the spirit started to clean up. And thankfully, I was still getting that really interesting peach and apricot flavor when I switched over to hearts. As the ABV started dipping down to around about 60%, I started getting hints of what might be tails, but this is a very different run than anything else I've made before, so I don't know what tails are gonna present like. So I switched over to the rolling cup method, filling a glass up off the still, tasting it as I go. Uh, when, I, when the glass is partially full and it still tastes good, that goes into the hearts bucket. Another one goes underneath, and it just stops you from smearing tails into good product, and you don't have to line up, you know, 100 jars. <laughs> the spirit has been proofed down to 57-ish percent ABV. It's into jars ready for aging with oak. I'm gonna taste it, tell you all about what the plan is here, but first, a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons, for being the people that support us day in, month out. Uh, we thoroughly freaking appreciate it. Thank you so much, team. So, let's taste the stuff first, uh, and then I'll tell you what I'm doing over here with on the aging side, shall we? Uh, by the way, team, uh, these coins are still available on chasethecraft.com if you're interested. They fit perfectly on top of a Glen Cairn glass. Funny that. <laughs> anyway, um, so aroma-wise, it's, it's actually smelling more like, it's not like a tequila, but it's more like a tequila than it was when it was coming off the still and you know, all the, all the different fractions were broken out. The, the straight up fruity nose, the, the peaches have kind of faded away, the apricots are still there, but it has that slightly more um, herbaceous isn't the right word like vegetal kind of thing that you get in a lot of tequila. Uh, that is showing up a little bit more now. More of the, the smoke actually. There's an there's a interesting savory flavor that is sort of sitting between roast Kumara skin and very, very subtle 
umami-ish smoke. It's very pleasant. It smells, it smells great as it is. Uh, but on the palate, it's a different story. When it first goes into your mouth, you get the same flavors and sensation that I just described on the nose. But after you swallow, that big, juicy, sweet, fresh stone fruit thing comes out again. I've never run into anything like it, to be honest. It is bizarre. So all in all, this is absolutely delicious. Uh, and you know what? Tasting this, I am 100% gonna have to save some of this as a white spirit. So I'll, after this video, I'm gonna pull a little bit out of each of these jars, just a small amount, and fill up a couple of little test bottles to compare later on. Uh, so what am I doing here? Uh, the first one, this is uh, American white oak that's been toasted and charred, uh, and it was used to age uh, Manuka whiskey for about a year and a half, I think, off the top of my head. Uh, Manuka is a, a local native, uh, it's kind of like halfway, but it's, it's a tree, but it's a small tree, uh, and it gives a very interesting herbal and sweet smoke that is super freaking strong. So I'm hoping that this one is gonna get pushed more towards just, just that little bit of extra smoke coming from the, the whiskey that seeped into the wood. I'm hoping that'll bring out the smoky characteristics in this one. Uh, and I plan on aging this for quite some time, like at least a year. 18 months is kinda, once again, shooting from the hip is what I'm thinking. This is a piece of US white oak that has not been used for anything. Uh, it has been toasted to bring out the vanilla characteristics and it's got a, what I'm calling like a one, two, three, four char. So each of the sides is charred slightly more heavily than the last. By the way, these are available, the maturation sticks on chasethecraft.com as well. Uh, so let's get this one in here. What is the, the hope for this one? I wanna get a decent amount of color on it. Uh, I wanna get a little bit of fruit flavor coming through, uh, not fruit, wood. I wanna get a little bit of wood flavor coming through, but I don't wanna age this one very long. I'm thinking like maybe two months, I wanna keep it, keep as much of the um, white spirit characteristics as I can with a little bit of wood influence as well. Uh, so I'm gonna chalk this one up to a complete and utter roaring success. Is it tequila? No, of course it's not. It's made with syrup and kumara. But uh, does it taste like tequila? No, not really, but it's absolutely freaking delicious and it does taste like it's inspired by tequila somehow. I don't know, man. Uh, I've got really high hopes for this, so, you know, I'll catch you in three months and a year or something and we'll, we'll do a tasting video. See you later, guys.